will. I hope that the things that are detailed in the book that you know are detailed in the book with receipts, that you come forth and let people know what you've done, the things you've done. So I don't have to put them out. You've got to atone for all these things you've done in the dark, hurting me, hurting other people, because you're following someone else. And those are the words of Brother Belial, the author of the book that will be shortly released called Will Smith, The Demonic Circle. Welcome back. My view, my opinion, the MVMO podcast. I am your host. I love hanging out with y'all. Thank you for being here. If you're new, passing through, drop down there in the description box. Information about me is there because you can't see me. You can only hear my voice. Now, listen, this is great for you because this is all the audio only. So just minimize me and do continue doing what you're doing on your device. Okay. Or just put your phone down and just continue multitasking around the house or driving or on the treadmill. So let's talk about this. I want to give a special shout out to one of y'all because I wouldn't have even known about this if you hadn't let me know. Thank you for giving, uh, asking me to talk about certain things because that's generally where I get these story ideas from. You guys will ask me. I don't, I don't do every request, but I do a lot of them. So one of the listeners said, listen, <clears throat> check this out. I'd like to know what you think about it. Okay. And I'll tell you, this was a great interview. Don't y'all think so? Those ones of you've seen it. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check the description box. I put the full 47 minute interview there. Okay. Because I don't have the permission of comedy hype to play any clips and I probably could get away with it, but I don't want to, I don't want to handle it like that. Um, so let's just go through a few things that brother Belial said on his interview and then we'll, we'll talk. Okay. So brother Belial, what his real name is, we don't know at least yet, because I'm sure there are some people going to come out and talk about him. <laughs> but he is a former assistant of Will Smith. He was friends with him for over 40 years. They um, met. They're both from Philadelphia. Um, he said we met. I was working at a radio station. Will came up there when he was rapping. Uh, DJ Jazz, Jazzy Jeff. Uh, 1986, we hit it off from there and we became friends and I started working for him. OK, he was not only the personal assistant of Will. He at one time was the personal assistant of the couple, Will and Jada. OK. Now, he also goes on to say here that um, I have a lot of notes here. His book actually was supposed to come out before Jada's. He said, but when Will and Jada got wind that he was writing this book, her book, which was supposed to come out in 2024, they moved it up. And so, of course, we know her book came out last Tuesday, October 17th, which is a flop, by the way. I did that story. Newsweek came out saying, you know, this is the one week anniversary with all the numbers. Her book is a flop. OK, and I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that people are turning away from this crap. OK, we're sick of these folks. Listen, do you leave us alone? Keep us out y'all mess. OK, just keep making great movies. Will that's all we really want. We don't need to know all this stuff. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the children. It's embarrassing. And if it's not embarrassing for the children, that tells you something else, because it ought to be embarrassing when your mom comes out and says, you know, all these things about your father and when your father kind of just kind of goes along with it. Now, I want to read some specific things here. The gentleman asked Brother Belial, why does Will keep staying with Jada? He said, is it love or is it something else? And I'm quoting here. This is a direct quote from the mouth of Brother Belial. He says, Jada has accepted things in Will's personal life. And by experiencing that, I know for sure that Will don't want these things to come out. And I feel that Jada is taking advantage of that. Why is he taking all this persecution? It's certain things that Jada has on him that Will don't want to come out. He feels that it would affect his career, his livelihood, and I don't think that's true, close quote. Now, I want to stop right there for a second before I go any further to some of the other things he said. I believe that because if you've been with me here on the commentary, that was the first of the stories that I did about Will. I was saying, her saying that they haven't been together all these years is opening the door, I believe, for him to eventually come out within the next two years as either gay or bisexual. Now, I also want to say this. I am very um, aware, guys, that I could be wrong. Remember, this is opinion commentary. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, I, I say things very matter of factly, but well, that's just my personality. I can't help that. But please know that, you know, this is not a fact. I ain't never sat down with the man. I ain't never seen him doing something. Ain't nobody called me and said, girl, <laughs> such and such and such. And. So, I don't know if that's what it is, but if I use my powers of deduction, you know, my reasoning skills, I know that, well, with all the things that have happened, you know, we talked about putting the puzzle piece together, the puzzle pieces together to make a picture. When I personally put all the puzzle, not you, but when I put the puzzle pieces that I've seen together, that's the picture I come up with, that this is a guy who has a secret, 
He feels it would ruin his life. He's finally found someone who is okay with staying with him while he explores this, this part of his life. And so, well, yeah, you know, and so in essence, even though brother Belial never used the word gay, he never said bisexual. He never said homosexual. He never said anything like that. He just kept referring to whatever it was that she had over his head as the secret, the secret. He got this secret. She knows things about him. Well, if I use my common sense, even just based on what he said, what, how many things could it be that she could have over him that if it were to come out or if those things were to come out, he would feel like we ruined his career. Well, guys, listen, it's not a million things that could ruin someone's career. Not in this day and time. It's only a handful of things, you know? And so that would be a part of the handful of things. Now, what I want all of us to do, and I'm working on this too, is to not be like, well, just come out already. Because listen, I don't know about y'all. I don't know nothing about that life. And so, but I've had clients when I used to do work in the public who were struggling with those things. And they talked about how hard it was for them. That is not something because you could risk losing everything. And believe it or not, and here's what I want to say too. Believe it or not, even though a lot of the world is like, we're okay with it. I will tell you something that I know for certain. Most people still do not accept this. But because nobody wants to be canceled, nobody wants their neighbor to hate them. Nobody wants their coworkers, you know, to go to the boss. Everyone just says, sure, I love it. I accept it. I'm a supporter of the LGBTQ plus community. But most people aren't. That's the truth. But they would never say it because they know, well, it's dangerous to say that. And in this day and time, it pretty much is dangerous to say that. It's dangerous for your career. Heck, it could be even dangerous for your life, depending on, you know, the situation. So we need to understand that even though from our vantage point, it seems like just do it. I mean, come on, be happy, be free, be you. But in his mind, it may, he may really feel like it would destroy his career. Not to mention he's a black man. Not to mention he's a black man in Hollywood. All of us in the black community, we've heard the interviews from these, these um, men and women, particularly the men in hip hop and R&B, Frank Ocean and others who've talked about if people even thought they were gay, that was it. <laughs> it was like, there was it. You can, they, your career was over. Remember Eric Sermon? I'm going way back, I'm going way back to the 90s, 90s rapper Eric Sermon. Now, whether he was or is or isn't, I don't know because I haven't kept up with him since then. But I just remember him talking about what happened to his career when Wendy Williams, who was still a shock jock at that time on the radio in New York, they had a little something, something, and it didn't go right. And they got into it. And she knew by saying he was gay, that would hurt him. Because back then, if a woman wanted to hurt a man, young folks, that's what she would say. That's one of the things she would say. Remember, the times were different. Now, don't go in a whole diatribe in the comments about how folks should do. The times were different. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so anywho, so she went on her radio program and said he was gay. And he said, because I watched this interview with Vlad on black television years ago, he said, that was it for me. He said, I couldn't get a deal after that. He said, nobody would touch me. He said, in essence, she ruined my career. And he wasn't the only one she did that to. Now, true, some of those folks were gay, but some of them were not. Okay. But the point is, is that in Will's mind, he came from that error. So let's just say this is the secret that Jada has on him. Those of us who are from that era too can understand why he would see it as this would just be the end for me. And although it wouldn't, not to mention his mama is still alive. And again, those of us who can't understand this, we don't understand it. So as far as I'm concerned, I think that's what it is. Again, I could be so wrong. I could be as wrong as Donkey Kong, but I'm just telling you, I believe it so strongly. I'm willing to say this and I'm willing to always come back and say I was wrong. Because when you're giving your opinion, sometimes we're wrong. You know, now let's get down to some other stuff that Brother Bilal said. Now, listen, <laughs> a lot of, you know, I'm a former investigator. And so it's very interesting, you know, because all of us as human beings were the same. I'm like this, too. You know, so basically the man, the gentleman from Comedy Hype asked him, why are you doing this? You know, why did you write this book? <laughs> and in the very beginning, Brother Bilal took the high road. Isn't that what we all do? So he said, oh, this is an intervention. This is like a, you know, I want to help him. I want I want him to, I just want him to come on out with whatever it is, you know. But then later, as he continues to talk, he tells on himself. And that's how we all are. Notice I said we, that means me too. All of us are like this. Because see, the more you talk, 
the more our guards are letting down more and more and more. And I remember interviewing people and they used to deny this and deny that. And so you know, I'm a very friendly person, a very personable woman. So, you know, I just be talking to them like I'm talking to you. And of course, then they kind of feel like I was their friend. And sometimes they stop and say, well, now off the record. And I'd have to stop and say, there's no such thing as off the record. Because, see, I knew what was happening. I was so friendly and personal, they kind of felt like they could tell me anything. But I had to remind them I'm here in official capacity. So if you tell me anything, now when I get on the stand, you know, I may have to, you know, so you got to be thinking about that, you know. But it's the same thing. The more people talk, they start telling it all. Oh, yeah, I really did hit her, you know, or I really did hit him. I really did do the drugs, you know, whatever, you know, I really did do such and such. But a moment ago, they were dead set against it. It never, it wasn't even them, you know, and that's what happened here because he eventually says, you know what? He hurt me. And then he said, he put me in his book. So now I'm putting them in mine. So the real issue here is revenge. He wants to, he wants to hurt him back. You know, he wants to get revenge on him. Now I did not read Will Smith's memoir to any of you. So if you did, let us know. What did he say about this man child that was so terrible that he felt like I have to get back at you by putting you by exposing all your secrets in a book? And like the man from Kami Hype said, he said, when I read the title, I was like, damn, (laughs) you know what? And I was like, when I read it, I was like, well, dang. I mean, is he just I mean, Will Smith, demonic circle. I mean, he playing. He, he, He wants to say exactly what this is going, what this book is about. Now, he tells us in the book that this book has QR codes. So he says, I didn't want folks to think I was just somebody who was disgruntled and out gossiping. He said, I got receipts for everything. He said, I got NDAs, copy of NDAs in the book. He said, I got recordings. So he says at the end of every chapter, y'all, there's the QR code. We can scan that. And that's going to take us to all the receipts. He also tells us that The book is not just about his experience and what he knows from being a part of their inner circle. It's also other people's experience. He says that he hired some attorneys and some private investigators to go through everyone's NDA and see where the loopholes were. And some of them had loopholes. And so the lawyer said, you can break this NDA based on X, Y, and Z. And so some of those people elected to break their NDA. Uh, He also tells us that, um, let's see. Oh, this was something he said I thought was very interesting. Still talking about why Will seems beholden to this woman who is obviously not good for him. He says, and I'm quoting here, quote, nobody's going to hold the secrets that Jada is holding. And I believe that. That's why I was saying to you guys on that initial broadcast, if what I'm thinking is accurate, I think he would say something like, you know, she's the first person that allowed me to explore that side of me. I mean, you think about it. What other woman who isn't dysfunctional and doesn't have her own issues in that area would be okay with her husband sleeping with another man. And I'm going to go so far as to say this and who would participate in the act with them because I think that was a part of it. I've said this to you guys. A lot of, you know, I love Vladis Lau. I love Vlad TV. And I know, you know, folks, Vlad, Vlad, listen, I don't know nobody that we can't say something about. Okay. That's negative. Okay. But I, I enjoy the work that he does, <clears throat> especially this whole Keefe D mess. I've been keeping up with it through him, but <clears throat> One of the things that Vlad has said so many times that I can't even count on, it's been, I got, I need some more hands to count. Anytime someone's been on there and they somehow talked about Will Smith, he said, he said, I don't want to get sued, so I ain't going to talk about it on camera. He said, but I'll tell you off camera. He said, some, I have friends that know the Smiths and have been to some of their parties. And he said, some of the stuff that they've told me they saw at those parties that the Will and Jada were doing, he said, he said, he said, it, it, it would blow your mind. And he said their children were there. So what could they have been doing? Well, drugs wouldn't blow nobody's mind because, well, we live in a drug culture. Um, It can't even be really um, them having sex out in the open because people do that. It can't be. You get what I'm saying? So when you do uh, what they call the the process of elimination, there are only a handful of things, y'all, that somebody would say, this right here is twisted. And this, their children were there. It would have to be something so perverted. And so for me, um, I felt like it was no doubt participating in the act with him. And again, just my personal opinion. I don't know these people. Now, as I get ready to end, I will tell y'all. I believed everything that Belial said. I do. 
And um, I'm not sure if he's going to make it, though. Now, Bilal did tell us he was moving to Saudi Arabia, which we know is a lie because he said, I got death threats. I got this. Well, if you were, you know, you wouldn't be telling people, but that's just to throw people off, I think, just to throw people off. But when his book is going to be out, I don't know. That right there was not made clear in the interview. But if I can find the book, I'm going to link it for you all uh, in the comment section. Uh, this will definitely be a book that I'm going to listen to on Audible if it comes out. Thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.